Hello everybody and welcome, this is Spoonie with the first in a series of tutorials covering YOLAL. In this video, we're going to go over the very basics and I'll show you how to reference a value, create a value, how to create a temporary value, and some basic YOLAL scripts that you can use to have your ship perform some basic functions. We'll also go over if statements and I'll explain everything about what those are and how to use them. So there are a few types of buttons, but the two that we'll be using most frequently are the simple button and the hybrid button. The simple button gives us a binary off or on state, which will read out a zero when the button is off or a one when the button is on. The hybrid button can be a binary button as well, but it can also read out whatever value we set to this button on state value or whatever value we set to this button off state value. So instead of a zero or a one, you can fill in whatever values for these two fields that fit your own individual needs. The button style dictates what type of button it is. So if it, this is set to a zero, you'll have to hold the button down. If it's set to one, you'll be able to press it once to turn it on and press it again to turn it off. There is a third option, which is a number two in this field, and that will give you the ability to set a four state switch, similar to a click pen. But for now, we're gonna be sticking with zeros or ones in this particular field. To quickly demonstrate how these buttons work, I'm going to place down a warning light button that's just a button that has the ability to light up or flash. If you feel like you need a more in-depth look at buttons and progress bars and how they work, I'll place a link to that tutorial in the top right corner. So first what we'll do is change the name field value of our warning light button from button state to button light. And we'll do the same on our simple button. Now let's go into test mode and see what happens when we press this simple button and turn it on. As you can see, this changes the value from 0 to 1. And when the value here is changed from a 0 to 1, the light turns on. So what we've just done is set a value. And because these values have the ability to be stored outside of the YOLAL chip, because they're stored on these buttons, we're going to call these our permanent values. Next, let's get into YOLAL, and let's have this button turn on or off using YOLAL. So in the first field, we're going to type colon, which is how we reference one of the values like we just set. So colon, button light, equals one. We're then going to skip a few lines and type colon button light equals zero. What this script will do is tell the button light to change its value to a one. And then it'll change it back to a zero. The line read speed is 0 0.2 seconds per line. So every five lines equals one second. So the light should stay on for two seconds, and then two seconds later, it should turn off. Let's see if it works. As you can see, the button is now activating and deactivating with the YOLAL script. But what if we wanted to have this button affect something that didn't have the same name value? To do that, we could set up an if statement in YOLAL, but first let's change this warning light button to have the name button light two. Now when we go into test mode, this button will have no effect on the warning light. To set up an if statement, on the first line of YOLAL, we're going to write if the value of button light and remember the colon because that's how we reference these permanent values. So if the value of button light equals one, and we're going to use two equal signs whenever we're using an if statement. Two equal signs means if true. If we wanted this to read if false, we can put an exclamation point followed by an equal sign. An exclamation point followed by an equal sign is how you would say false. So currently this statement would read, if it's false that button light is one. 
so the action would trigger whenever the button light is not equal to 1. But because we want it to be equal to 1, we'll use two equal signs. So now this reads, if it's true, the value of button light is 1. So the reason we can't use a single equal sign here is because that's not how we reference a value. That's how we change a value in YOLAL. To reference a value, we would need to say it's either true, it's false. We could also use it's greater than, it's less than, it's greater than or equal to, or it's less than or equal to. There are a few other options, but for now, we'll stick with these. Since we just want to have YOLAL check and see if the value of button light is equal to one, we're just gonna use two equal signs to see if it's true. So if it's true that the value of button light is one, then button light two equals one. And this time we'll only use one equal sign because we're setting the value of button light two equal to one. And we'll finish it with the word end. Finish all of your if statements with the word end, otherwise YOLAL will skip that line entirely and they will not function. Before we test this, we're gonna type go to one in the second field. This will tell YOLAL to just go back to the first line every time it gets to the second line. Otherwise, we would have to wait a few seconds for it to read all of these empty lines before this action triggered. Now let's jump into test mode and see if it works. As you can see, when I turn the button on, the light comes on. But when I turn it off, nothing happens. This is because we didn't tell YOLAL to do anything if the value wasn't equal to 1. We only told it to do something if the value was equal to 1. We can set up a second action for in case this is not true by using the word else. So if the value of button light is not equal to one, then we want it to set the value of button light two equal to zero. So this statement now reads, if the value of button light is one, or if it is true that the value of button light is one, then set the value of button light two equal to one. Else or otherwise, set the value of button light two equal to zero. And don't forget to use end. So now let's jump into test mode and see how this affects the off state of our button. As you can see now, the button functions whether we've turned it on or off. Now let's see how YOLO handles some basic arithmetic. Here we have 20 batteries, but we're just going to use these top five. Let's say that we wanted to add up the values of these top five batteries and have them displayed on a progress bar. Each battery has a value of 10,000. So this would equal 50,000 in total charge. First, what we'll need to do is change the names of all of these batteries. We're going to use the stored battery power field because that's where it indicates the amount of battery charge that's currently available. So we'll change this to battery one, and we'll do this one through five. Now that we have our batteries named, let's see what happens if we type one of those battery values into the progress bar. For this, you will need to jump into test mode after you've named the value, because when you're not in test mode, the charge on the battery is set to zero. But when we jump into test mode, we can see that the charge is set to 10,000 and that that battery is full. Remember to set the panel's maximum value to whatever you want the maximum value to be on the bars here. If it was set to 100, but our batteries had a charge of 10,000, it would indicate numerically that it is set to 10,000, but the bars would not begin to degrade unless it was under 100. So it would appear as though you had a full battery until you were very close to having no charge left at all. 
But because we want this progress bar to indicate the value of all five batteries, we're going to set this maximum value to 50,000. And we're going to change this from battery one to just battery. Next, what we'll do is we'll go back into YOLAL and we'll tell YOLAL to set the value of battery to the value of those five batteries added together. So to do this in YOLAL, we're going to have the value of battery be set to the value of those other five batteries combined. So we'll type the value of battery equals the value of battery one plus the value of battery two plus the value of battery three and so on. If your script isn't working for some reason, the first thing you should do is go back and make sure that you've included a colon because often that's something that's overlooked and it's an easy mistake to make. Next, we'll type go to one on our second line. Otherwise, this would only update every four seconds because it would be reading all of these empty lines. Now let's jump into test mode and see if this works. As you can see, our value of battery is now 50,000. But let's say we had a lot of batteries, enough that we couldn't fit the addition on this first line of YOLAL. What we could do is change the name from battery one and battery two to just B1 and B2. That way we could fit more. But if we had so many batteries that even that wasn't a solution, what we could do is set up a temporary value. A temporary value is a value that only this YOLAL chip can read. It's not stored anywhere outside of the YOLAL chip because there is no colon. And even if there was a colon placed on it, it would need somewhere to store that value outside of the YOLAL chip. So we'd need a button or a panel or a memory chip set up that had that value also. Otherwise, it will not be permanent. To demonstrate how this works, we're gonna change this from colon battery to just the letter B with no colon. So now B will be our temporary value. We'll run this YOLAL script and we'll see what happens in test mode. As you can see, battery no longer registers this. And if we were to set up this panel to the value of B, again, nothing happens. Now, to reference these temporary values, all we're going to do is simply say that the value of battery equals B with no colon. This means that the value of battery will be set to whatever this temporary value is. And since B, our temporary value, is set to the value of all of these batteries added together, that's what battery will be. So let's go into test mode and see if it works. As you can see, now battery is again equal to 50,000. Let's practice this a little further, and we're gonna set up a second temporary value. So we'll delete our first and second lines of code, and we'll leave our first temporary value equal to only the value of battery one and battery two. Our second temporary value will be B2, and we'll set that equal to the value of battery three, four, and five. Next, on the second line, we'll again type the value of battery, so colon battery, equals B, only this time we'll add B2. So now it's the value of battery is equal to B plus B2. Let's go into test mode and see how this works. So in test mode, you can see that battery is equal to 50,000. It is adding our two temporary values together. But let's delete one of these temporary values and see what happens. As you can see, the value of battery has changed to be equal to only one of these temporary values, which was our first, the letter B, which is the value of only two batteries. If we change this to B2, 
you can see battery changes to 30,000, which is the value of our second temporary value, three batteries. If we change this back to B plus B2, we again get 50,000. This is a really easy way to simplify your YOLO scripts. Remember though, it is important to set up these temporary values before they're referenced. So if we were to set up the value of battery equals B plus B2 on our first line of YOLO, and then set the temporary values up on our second line, the first time YOLO goes through that script, it wouldn't know what B or B2 is because it hasn't read them yet. So if at all possible, make sure you're setting up your temporary values first. And I'll show you an example of how that works. So here, I'm going to remove the go to one, and I'm going to highlight this first line of YOLO. I'm going to cut it out, and I'm going to paste it all the way down on the 20th line. Now let's go back into test mode and see what happens. As you can see, battery is equal to zero until that 20th line is read, and then it updates. You can do a lot with YOLO using only the few things we've gone over in this video. YOLO is capable of a lot more though. Using the basic chips, you can use addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. If you're going beyond that and using exponents, factorials, square roots, anything like that, you'll need an advanced chip. If you want to get into sines, cosines, tangents, you'll need a professional chip. In the next video, we'll get into some more complicated scripts and we'll build on our knowledge of YOLO.